So metamaterials um, have allowed us to manipulate light in ways that we didn't imagine even just about 15 years ago. And so um, this uh, uh, possibility um, has given rise to a number of uh, applications for uh, manipulating electromagnetic fields or what we understand as, as light. A particular way of bending or manipulating or uh, morphing light is to um, bend it around an object. Uh, it's a little like taking, a, if you imagine light to be um, water flowing through a stream and you put some, for example, a tree in the middle of the stream, then the water flows around that tree and the streamlines become parallel afterwards so that an observer the other side of that tree just sees the parallel uh, lines. And what can happen there with water, through the science of metamaterials, we can now do with light. And so we can take light and, and bend it around objects so that an observer behind that object has no knowledge that the object is there. It becomes invisible. Um, this idea um, was formulated in 2006 um, in this department at Imperial College here in physics uh, by Professor Sir John Pendry and independently using a slightly different idea, a different concept by uh, Professor Ulf Leonhardt, who was then at uh, St. Andrews University. And the idea takes the basic equations that describe light, um, which are very famous equations called Maxwell's equations, one of the fundamental equations of physics that uh, we learn about in the, as undergraduate physicists. These were uh, written down in the 1860s and uh, very much influencing our lives to every day. Everyone's lives are influenced by Maxwell's equations and I've actually made a living out of uh, studying Maxwell's equations. Um, but one of the features of Maxwell's equations that was noticed in 2006 was that um, we could apply some kind of transformation. Some, imagine you've got some space that you want to change in some way. You want to squash it or you want to stretch it in some way, relating it ultimately to the ability to stretch around an object. What was noticed at that time was that the equations, Maxwell's equations, had a certain property that when you applied some transformation, some stretching or morphing of space, um, they retained the same structure. Um, it's called a, a, an invariance or a covariance. And it's an idea that um, was um, very much emphasized by Einstein in, in, in his work on general relativity. But in, in terms of metamaterials and how it, uh, the, how it influenced the, the ideas that led to cloaking, it was a crucial idea that this, this bending of um, space uh, left the equations in the same structure in some sense. And not just in the same structure, but they told us an extra piece of information that hadn't been noticed before. And that was that the, the, the mere transformation, which of course is something that occurs just in our minds, that's just how, how we write it down on a write the equations down on a piece of paper. But they actually told us something extra. They told us that by maintaining the same structure, this, this, this covariance, of the equations, they actually told us how to make a material that would actually bend light. So if we, in our imagination, we have two ways of describing something and the laws of physics have to look the same however you transform something, then that invariance told us that an extra piece of information that allowed us to actually build a material that could do that, that transformation, that squashing. And so, of course, the, um, uh, the first ideas um, that, that exploited this were, were directed towards uh, the most 
interesting and imaginative uh, transformation, and uh, Professor Pendry came up with this beautiful idea of uh, changing the direct, uh, performing a transformation or changing the, the positions of the electric and magnetic fields in such a way that they would never actually interact with an object. They would, in some sense, flow around the object. And so the equations told us how to actually make a metamaterial that could produce this bending of light in reality to make an electromagnetic cloak. Now, it's a, uh, one thing I've been amazed about in, in my scientific career is how rapidly uh, ideas are tra transformed into reality. Um, and uh, although this was a theoretical concept, the idea that you could make uh, manipulate light with metamaterials to make objects invisible was sort of fascinating, but um, I, I, suspect, I suspected it would be some years before we would even have the simplest demonstration. In fact, it was very shortly afterwards, I believe in the same year of 2006, that uh, an experiment was performed in the microwave region, so slightly longer wavelength than, than visible light but actually demonstrated um, the inv an invisibility using a metamaterial um, about so big um, that was able to cloak an object about the size of a small coin um, and uh, demonstrated uh, that, that it could be rendered invisible. It wasn't perfect because uh, there, was, there were technological limitations, but we had the, the, the crucial point, it seems to me, that this was a matter of, of technology rather than one of principle. Our principle is that we can, we understand now how to m uh, make a, a cloak and we how to make objects invisible. It's now a matter of technology to actually uh, implement that. It, we can't do it perfectly at the moment, but we're getting better and better. And indeed, we're now, at, uh, as the, um, we'd, obviously, we would like to make invisible, uh, invisibility cloaks at uh, much shorter wavelengths, visible light, for example, and that Im imposes ever greater uh, technological challenges, but we're improving all the time. Um, and so it's no, uh, it, we've reduced the problem to one of technology rather than one of principle. In order to make objects invisible puts very, very severe challenges on the type of metamaterial that is, uh, has to be created. It has to have a, an electrical and a magnetic response that are essentially identical. Um, and it's very hard to manipulate the magnetic response. In fact, naturally, the magnetic response in natural materials are magnetically unresponsive, mostly, um, and virtually all at, at uh, high frequencies. And so our challenge is to, um, in, in terms of getting a, a perfect cloak, is to achieve an identical electrical and magnetic response. Incidentally, the the reason that we need an identical electrical and magnetic response is that's precisely what happens to light in vacuum. Um, light travels in vacuum in a, in, in a particular way so that the electric and magnetic field um, feel the, the same effects of vacuum. And we're trying to reproduce that in our metamaterial, but in a, a stretched or or, or, or morphed um, way. So one, uh, one of the big challenges is to actually maintain the same re response, both electrical and, and magnetic. Um, beyond the simple ideas of, of cloaking, we would also like to uh, be able to make structures that are much flatter. Um, and um, the idea of um, uh, reducing some of the extreme parameters that, that are required to produce three-dimensional cloaking can be relaxed somewhat if we go to, to, to lower dimensions. So, for example, in two dimensions, it's actually easier to produce a, a, a cloak. And so um, we've actually got a bit further in terms of cloaking big objects if we can go down to um, uh, as lower dimensions. So in turn, of course, uh, everyone's uh, 
researchers, funding agencies, and uh, the children of researchers would all like to have an invisibility cloak that we can take to parties and things like that. Uh, that's not going to happen in the immediate future. And so to kind of um, give a perspective on the immediate direction of this field, my own view is that uh, cloaking is an extremely interesting um, idea for um, uh, for hiding objects, but the likely technological significance is, is in terms of how it will influence the, um, uh, the way we process and manipulate um, optical signals in ways that perhaps are not immediately apparent to us. So in some optical processing unit, it will be possible to direct and manipulate light in ways that, that we uh, are not routinely done at present. And so uh, the, the, the output in terms of the impact that how, how it might affect our daily lives ultimately is in some sense hidden from us, a kind of, if you, if you will, a kind of conceptual cloaking that uh, as, as, far, as far as the um, end user is concerned, they're not aware of the, the trick, little tricks that occur um, in the optical processing system. But I believe that cloaking and other related technologies could, uh, could form a significant part of the improvement in such devices.